So that was a bigger sip than I intended. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a squirrel. Again, again with the squirrel. Oh, I really am that dog. I am that dog. Can you see him? You can't see him. You think I'm crazy. Okay. That was a lot of, yeah, sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kelly and I am just trying to lose some weight. So first things first, Vegas has been postponed. I'm bummed, but I'm also relieved. So <laughs> what happened was <laughs> my husband fell and he fell hard. So I'm sure I've mentioned it, but my husband, in fact, right now in front of me are all his toys because he can't get down into the basement right now, but he plays with RC cars remote control cars and when I say plays with he buys kits he builds them he paints them and then he races them or runs them or whatever we have a whole course in our backyard and at work he and some other like-minded individuals I think there's like four other guys there that also do RCs they have built a course in the back of the workplace so on their breaks they go out and they run their cars well Monday I got a text from him that said uh, I took a tumble while running cars and I'm not sure if I'm okay <laughs> basically so he said he's gonna give it an hour and then if it still hurt then he was going to go to urgent care. So what he had done was he fell, but trying to break his fall, like he fell on his side. So he's trying to break his fall. He put his arm up, but instead of breaking his fall with his arm, he ended up jamming his elbow into his rib and then falling on that and jamming it further into his rib. So he was pretty sure he'd cracked a rib. He was breathing okay as long as he didn't take a super deep breath and he could move a certain way and take a deep breath. So he gave it an hour and then I got another text. I was at work. I got another text that said, go into urgent care. So, and for my husband to go to a doctor, he has to be hurting pretty bad. To put it in perspective, when he had his heart attack, he waited two weeks <laughs> to go to the doctor and only went because I came home that day and said we're going like i didn't in, have the foggiest clue that it could possibly be a heart attack he had just not been feeling well for two weeks he had jaw pain and a headache and uh he was just he was feeling lousy and he had said he was going to go to the doctor that day if he didn't feel better this is two weeks we had and we have a rule we have a rule that if you're feeling crummy and not you know like it's an emergency then give it some time. And if it's still, feel, if you still feel crummy, you go to the doctor. Well, the rule is basically a week and it had been two weeks and then he was still making excuses. So I came home and I forced him to go and we went and ended up, he'd had a heart attack. So yeah. <laughs> so for him to actually on his own, go to the doctor, it means he was hurting pretty bad. And so they did x-rays and it, they said it wasn't cracked. Uh, everything's fine. Take some Tylenol and, you know, use a heating pad. They didn't say ice, which was weird to me. They said heat and Tylenol. So basically what we figured out is that he's dislocated a rib. He feels like something, he feels it. He feels it go in and out and he doesn't like chiropractors so he won't go and everything I've read said it should heal itself given enough time but all this happened a week prior to our trip so we had to make a decision and so we did we decided that obviously 
he wasn't going to have a good time. He was going to be in pain. He's still in pain. Like it's, it's been a week. We were supposed to go to Vegas in two days now, right now. And he can barely, like, I have to help him get in and out of bed. He's improved a lot, but he's still very much in pain. And he would have to do all of the driving, which is nine hours. And don't come at me. I don't drive on freeways and I don't like driving at night. It's, I, it's a fear of mine. I will have a panic attack. We will crash and die. So <laughs> we had to make a decision and we decided that it just wasn't worth it. So if we could change their, our plans and get refunded for all the things and then make new plans, get the time off approved, all that, then, then we would do it. And we did. Sorry, I don't know why that I needed to launch into all of that detail. So basically we've pushed it out a month. So we're going in December and hopefully he'll be at least 80% better. Everything I've read says it takes at least six weeks to heal. So hopefully, and he's already, he's doing a lot better. Like he was, I, I don't do well when my husband shows his human qualities. <laughs> like when he had the heart attack, like basically knowing he's mortal. I don't like that because <laughs> I have deep seated fear of losing loved ones. And wow. Okay. See deep, deep seated. <laughs> And so anytime he's hurt or, I mean, it just, like mentally I shut down. I do what I have to do to help him and get him through and keep a brave face on and, and you know, so that he doesn't think that it's bothering me. But then I will go in a corner and cry for hours. I don't know why I needed to share that with you, but <laughs> it's, it was a lot. It was a lot seeing him in that much pain. And almost, it was like almost worse than the heart attack, not in the way that I knew that he could have died with that, but he was never really in a lot of pain after. He was just having to take it easy, which was even harder because he didn't feel like he had had any, you know, he, he was like, well, I, I feel better since they put the stent in, so I should be able to do stuff. And seeing him in pain and hearing him just, uh, oh, it, it's gutted me this week. And we haven't had a lot of good sleeping because he just, he'll, he'll get in bed and it'll pop out. He'll have to get back out, pop it back in, try to get back. It's, it's a whole ordeal. Like it takes him, it takes us at least a half an hour to get him settled into the bed. And then if he has to get up to pee or if it pops out again, I mean, it's just, we have to start all over again. It's been a lot. And so I knew that doing that in Vegas would be no fun. And so we're going to postpone the trip. That was a really, really, really long-winded way to say our trip has been pushed out a month. So there you go. But yesterday was Saturday and I weighed in. So last week I weighed in at 184 pounds. This week I weighed in at 181.8. So I lost 2.2 pounds this week. So yeah, I feel good about it. And I think what happened is that my period is, was kind of wonky and it lasted longer than it normally does. So I think I saw this week, I saw the water weight come off. Because I actually wasn't as good this week as I have been the last like three weeks. So logistically, it made zero sense for me to lose the most weight this week. But yeah, I think it was, I think it was my periods. So, which tells me that my period will be a week late or so. And I'm sure it's just the perimenopausal crap. But either way, I lost two pounds this week. So I am psyched about that. And I have to fight myself to not take this additional month that I have before Vegas and go shopping again for more clothes. I have to shut that down. My brain instantly thought that 
as soon as we postponed it, I was like, that means in a month, I'll, I'll be able to go clothes shopping again and get more clothes for Vegas. And I, I need to, I need to lock that shit down. I can't do that. I can't, I can't, or I won't have any money for Vegas. <laughs> so, but it's still in the back of my mind. Don't, don't think I haven't, don't think I'm not going to figure out a way to, to at least go buy like a couple tops or something. Cause I probably will. And I'll probably want to go to Target and try on the size 10 jeans that will actually be size 10 jeans. Because if you remember, I bought them and I think they're mislabeled because they fit just like 12s. But that's neither here nor there. I lost two pounds this week. So there. So last week I talked about going on maintenance after Vegas. And I'm thinking I will continue doing what I'm doing for right now with Vegas postponed. I felt pretty okay this week, but like I said, I wasn't that strict. I stayed mostly within my calories, but also didn't kick myself or feel super guilty if I went a hundred over or whatever. So I'm gonna kinda, kinda sit with that and see how I feel. I may I may choose to do the maintenance thing. I don't know. It all depends on how I feel at the time. So y'all know I'm super emotional and that rules my brain and it, it'll, it'll all depend. But for right now, I'm going to continue with the status quo. There's this girl again. <laughs> I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing and see how I feel. So there's that. It did feel a lot better this week, a lot less tired and I think, well, I mean, physically I was tired, but a lot less mentally tired about the diet and exercise. And I think that had a lot to do with caring for Rob and that being a distraction. I wasn't thinking about food as much and I wasn't thinking about the exercise. It was just, which is good because that shows that this has become a habit now and it's just something that I do like without really thinking about it. It was never an, a, a thought of well, I need to postpone this exercising because I need to take care of him. It was always like, well, I just, this is, this is what I do now. So I just didn't think about it because I was thinking about him, but I didn't stop doing it. So that, I don't know if that made any sense, but basically it's good because it's cemented in my brain that this is just how, this is just my life now and exercise is a part of it. And that's good because I've always been the kind of person that's always been like, oh, I don't want to, and would fall off the exercise wagon and never really get back on until I started another weight loss journey. So that tells me that this is hopefully going to not be an issue. So I don't know if you can hear that cricket, but there is a cricket in my house. And I can locate its general vicinity, but I have no idea what to do about it. <laughs> How do you catch a cricket in your house and let it out? Yeah, I don't know what to do, but the noise is kind of making me crazy. It's kind of comical because it literally is, I'm just sitting here not saying anything and all I hear is crickets. <laughs> so that's all I've got for this week. Hopefully Rob's on the mend and in a month we will try the Vegas trip again. So until then I will keep on keeping on or something. I don't know. I'm very rambly right now as you can tell. So if you have enjoyed any part of this video please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.